with a McNaughton Cup back in its rightful spot here in Mankato. The Mavericks return to the home ice and they get set to open the WCHA playoffs. It's Minnesota State and Alaska Anchorage next on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Good evening, Don Westfall, Dan McCarger back here in downtown Mankato where we're set for the first of the three-game series here. Maybe only two. We hope it's only two, obviously, <laughs> as the Mavericks open up the top seed in the WCHA tournament against Alaska Anchorage, a team that hasn't even been in the playoffs in the past six years, Dan. Yeah, it's a nice turnaround for them just to get there. Uh, we want it to be very short this weekend to have the Mavericks just move on, but uh, they, last time these two teams met, it went down to the final second of the game. In fact, it did, and that was Ian Scheidt getting the game, uh, getting the tying goal with just a second left and the Mavericks actually getting the extra point in three-on-three -three hockey. Playoff hockey, always intense, always exciting, and this Maverick team is ready to go. They're ready to go. They want to play fast. We're going to see a fast, fast Maverick hockey team tonight, and that's exciting. Let's hear from the head coaches, Mike Hastings for the Mavericks, and on the Seawell side, Matt Curley. What you'll see with their style tonight, as they were over the second half of the season, and uh, Matt Curley's done a really good job at getting this group to buy into playing aggressive hockey. And I don't mean going out and running around. I mean trying to take away time and space. So we're going to have to manage the puck real well because they're going to come at us. They're going to forecheck us with two players. Their defensemen are going to pinch. They're going to try and create opportunities by making us make mistakes uh, with and without the puck by taking away time and space. So uh, our puck management is going to be very important. And then uh, trying to elongate the game. And what I mean by that is stretch it. Don't If they're going to come in and try and keep us in our zone, uh, take the ice that's available, which is the ice that's going to be behind them, and be able to get pucks back there and then try and possess and make them defend when they're in their zone. So uh, challenge because they're going to be aggressive. They're not going to sit back and, and wait for us to make a mistake. They're going to try and force us to make a mistake. And it's going to be up to us to be able to handle that pressure. I know uh, their decor is uh, as strong as anybody out there in the country. Uh, so we have to take advantage of any uh, chance that uh, they might give up, and, and uh, we need to take advantage of that. And then three is just stay in the course. Uh, we can't win this series tonight, nor can the Mavericks. So for us, it's uh, th this is a great opening opportunity to show, see what playoff hockey is like, and to draw every shift every time the guys come off is to draw from that experience with that shift because, as mentioned, and uh, tonight isn't going to decide anything. So whatever the outcome of this evening's contest is, is knowing that we got a chance to do it again tomorrow. We thank the head coaches for helping us out here with the Maverick pregame show. Brought to you, as always, by Coldwell Banker Commercial Fisher Group. And Dan, uh, one of the things that both coaches talked about with us at length here during the pregame show was the importance of specialty teams. We'll bring us some graphics right now. And obviously the Mavericks, if you look at things yeah. across the board, they're not only tops in the WCHA, they actually are among the nation's leaders, if not number one, when it comes to penalty kill, power play, all the above. Well, not surprising. The Mavericks have been really good on all of them all season long. You don't end up in the pairwise as high as they been all year without being really good at those uh, but both teams really would like to go five uh, on five as much as possible tonight and let's hope it stays that way but if we get to special teams the Mavericks clearly would be the favorite. Special units on the other side for Alaska Anchorage they actually uh, both on the penalty kill and power play if you look at overall games 54th in the country and the other problem is Dan this is a team that actually leads the WCHA in penalty minutes. Well they lead the, the country in penalty minutes as well so they take a ton of penalties uh, I got a feeling they're going to try to not do that tonight but they're going to play physical and if they play physical with the Mavericks, that's probably the only way they can slow them down. The problem is, if you play physical and slow them down, you're probably going to be in the box a lot. And also, that gives the Mavericks an opportunity. Is it much more physical? The last Anchorage wants to get this Maverick team. The depth, I think, is really going to be key this week. No question. Four lines, running four lines all weekend long is what Mike Hastings wants to do. If he can go uh, five on five all evening, run four lines, I think he likes his chances. All right. Again, we're coming up Friday Night Hockey, the first in the best of three-game series from Mankato. It's the Seawolves and Mavericks next after this timeout. We welcome you to the WCHA Playoffs, downtown Mankato here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend and Flow Hockey TV. Of course, the Mayo Clinic Health System Events Center, the home of this best of three series between the top-seeded Mavericks of Minnesota State, third in the country, and the Seawolves of Alaska Anchorage. And as we just mentioned, making their first appearance in the WCHA tournament in six years, Mike Hastings. This club has uh, been really in the top five all year long, and it took all the way down to the very last game of the regular season for the Mavericks to win the title outright. They had secured at least a tie going into Bemidji State. And on the other side, second-year head coach Matt Curley. 
Mavericks and the Seawolves, Dan, have only met once in the playoffs. It was Don Brose's last game in this building back in 2000. That was a while ago. That was a while ago. Mavericks would go on to lose to the Gophers at the Target Center the following weekend. Their first appearance in the WCHA Final Five at that time. Chris Carlson, Dan, on the left has got to be a superstar tonight. No question. Uh, he's got to be under two goals allowed tonight. I don't think there's any way if the Mavericks score more than three three goals, I don't see how the Seawolves win this game. So he's got to keep it down to two or less, and, and most likely one goal allowed will give him any chance to win this game tonight. We just saw Dryden McKay, and we'll have a chance over the weekend to talk about his accolades, not only winning the uh, goalie championship as far as the WCHA, but really his numbers in the top or near the top in just about every significant category in the NCAA itself. So the Mavericks, Toomey up on top, McNeely will shove it down. Michaelis is in the corner. Souter out in front trying to feed one for Toomey and it was just poked away from him as he was trying the one-timer. Toomey, Souter, he has to wait for Michaelis to clear to dump, and then the Mavericks will go off on a change. Just underway here Friday night. And Mankato again, best of three. And, of course, as the uh, evening rolls on, we will continue to bring you updated scores from around the WCHA and the other three series. One game already uh, getting going up in Michigan, in-state rivalry between Northern and Tech. Sent out of the zone by Heike Verda, and this will be an early icing call. And uh, Dan, while we have a moment, you can bring us the keys for tonight. Mike Hastings says he wants to control the pace of this game as much as possible. They would like to play five on five all night long and run, 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 run. Stay disciplined. The Seahawks, uh, I'm sorry, the Sea Wolves take a lot of penalties, and he would like to, hey, when they're getting physical with them, stay very disciplined and don't retaliate at all. Then make you, uh, you University of Alaska Anchorage miss. And that, that means a miss on the shots, so you get back shots, and also miss when they come up to hit you. Be always moving so they don't get a clean target. Fry and Jeremko behind the net. One of the boards will be tapped out by Shy. Gerard picks it up. Near side, dumped in by Reggie Lutz. Carlson is back to play it for Heike Verda. Pairs to the far side, gets away from Heike Verda. Dallas Gerads is after it, along with Jared Nash. Napravnik, Amit puts one off a skate, will go the other way, a race for the puck. Amick quickly gets back. It's poked away from him by Nash, however. Nash will bring it out in front, lose puck possession, and it's tapped out by Naprovnik. Back into the zone. St. Ange behind Amit. Back up on top. Sinclair can't control that pass. Smith, long lead pass. Dallas Gerads will flip it into the zone. Absolutely no pressure on the Sea Wolves whatsoever this weekend. They, they're a team that really has nothing to lose. They can come in and throw out everything at, that they've got at the Mavericks and not to, have to be concerned. You make a mistake, it doesn't really matter. The people aren't expecting anything from them. That's a, that's a position to be in that uh, is not uh, something to take lightly. Mavericks almost had a chance with Dewar now breaking it in the second attempt. They almost had a three on two. Dewar fires it behind the net. Connor Mackey. All the way to the far corner, McNeely is there to tap it in. Rivera will get to it first in the near corner. To the point, Connor Mackey trying to send it down for Dewar, but it's picked up by Nolan Nicholas. Mackey with the puck for the Mavericks. Left off now, Reese Smolik. Molik with a game winner last Saturday night in the championship win for the Mavericks. 4-1 win over Bemidji State. Here's a chance down low. Oh! Toomey probably had a really good look at a shot. Was going to give it up, however, for Michaelis. And that pass failed to connect. I think he was looking for a give and go to uh, Michaelis down low, then get out in front. But he probably had a pretty good chance just looking at it and taking a shot. Zach Court. That one was Nick Brown. Mavericks to the near corner. 
to me. Poked away from him. That shot goes off Smolik as it was taken by Brown. Out at center ice. Harris dumps it back in. Jeremko tapped off the boards out of the zone. Dumped back in by Drace Pears. Shy long pass doesn't connect. He was looking to ring it around the boards and clear. Looks like Matt Curley likes his start so far. This is pretty good, yeah. We've actually spent more time in the Maverick defensive zone. Sinclair gets back. Picked up by Pears. Now Lutz, low angle shot. That was blocked and he's going to go up over the net out of play. Well, they're playing fast so far. They're playing physical and they haven't made any mistakes so far. So I think uh, they'd be feeling pretty good about what they've done. Jared Spooner out of the lineup tonight has been out for a couple weeks. He's out for the season with an injury, and that's a big loss for the Mavericks. And he had really started to heat up both offensively, as you can see, and also uh, had become one of the stalwarts for the Mavericks in the faceoff circle. He worked so long to get through the... Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that came from nowhere. Just a faceoff. Quick shot off the faceoff, and the Mavericks have a lead. Puck was just sitting there after the faceoff draw, still in the circle. Lutz pounced on it one time. One just fired it, threw a little bit of traffic. Carlson never moved after until it was uh, off the post and behind him. You could hear the pipe here, and I didn't think it was going to go in, but it dropped in. See it just laying there, and nice job by Reggie Lutz with his 12th of the season, his 21st point. The Mavericks have a one-goal lead. Just over four minutes gone here in the first. And the Mavericks will pick up the first tally of the weekend. Dan mentioned his 12th of the season for Lutz. And boy, it was just an innocent looking play. But tough one for the Seawolves to give up so early. This is the Mavericks' second shot on goal. Tripped away from the Provnik and out of play. You mentioned it's just such an unexpected play there. You know, the faceoff is one. It goes about a foot off the dot, and Reggie Lutz sees it. It's just laying there. He jumps on it, gets off a shot, and it's like that. The Mavericks are up one nothing. The crowd is into it. And Don, really impressed with the crowd tonight. With the students gone uh, on spring break, uh, they are here, and it's loud already. So a uh, very nice crowd. This is bigger than many of the crowds we've had in the playoffs in the last couple of years, Especially, so that's nice. Yeah, with the students on spring yep. break, the Mavericks acknowledging that, trying to do some promotions to get in people into the building. It looks like it worked. Jeremko getting the lone assist on that play with the uh, winning the draw for the Mavericks. Ike Verda, Buono. Everybody just kind of froze for just a second, Don. That's all it took. Tap out. Race for the puck. Smith will get there ahead of Oh no, it's Smith still with it. Mitchell's now on him. The Provnik trying to work through a little traffic. The Provnik with a couple of Seawolves on his back. The Provnik somehow comes out of that with the puck. Connor Mackey, another low angle shot. That got through Smith trying to get to the rebound. Still loose on the side. The Provnik will step in for the Mavericks. Back to Mackey, far side. McNeely jumps one and that one's actually off. The leg of a defender out in front. Mavericks will get a new group of forwards on the ice. Doerr will carry into the zone. Doerr will come behind the net trying to sweep one. Now still behind the net. Rivera trying to pack one in as Carlson has lost his stick. That shot goes up and over the crossbar. Doerr with a big hit on <laughs> Pears who was trying to deliver the hit. Brown in the corner for Anchorage. To the near side, Smolik trying to get there and holds temporarily. Now lifted to the line and out as it's played by Wicks. That was a nice shot by Dewar. Helpless feeling for the goaltender with no stick. He's not sure where it is. It's directly behind him, so he doesn't really dare go try. Souter, low angle shot, trying to sweep it out in front. It's smothered and stuffed behind the net. Wicks is there to play it. Poked away from him by Souter. Now Court, near side for Brown. And the goalie has got his stick back again. Brought in behind the net. Still carrying his fry to the far side. Nicholas, and that one score! Wow, what a deflection. Brown was camped right on top of the crease. There was a Maverick on him, but Brown with the deflection 
And we're knotted up at one and not even seven minutes gone in the first. Luke Brown, his eighth of the season, his 20th point, and the game is all tied up and just seemed uh, like a shot from the side, and he got a stick on it, and Dryden McKay had no chance on the redirect. Big answer for the Seawolves. Well, Brown had a five-game winning streak broken last Saturday night. He scored in now 15 of his 19 games on the season, but right out in front, and as you said, Dan, there was really nothing Dryden McKay could do on the play, and we yeah, tied at one. He had two points on Friday night to get that streak to five games and then didn't score on Saturday night, as you mentioned, but he's right in the books tonight again, and we're all even. McNeely dumps it back in behind Carlson. Sinclair. And we get back to again, and Matt Curley has to be really excited about this start for his club. Fed down low. Souter will track it down in the corner. Poked away from him. Sinclair will carry. St. Ange on the far side as it's kicked behind the net. McNeely. Connor Mackey spins away from Nash, and the Mavericks will get set to bring it out to center ice with Michaelis. Michaelis a punch in the corner for Charlie Girard. Long lead pass out of the zone. Mavericks will have to clear before they can play it. Now Scheid will get there. Trying to get puck possession. He tapped into the toward the line, however, and it's cleared back. Zach Rett, the shot. Shied for the Mavericks. Jeremko. Smolik will bring it into the zone. Lutz. Off into the corner. Harris has it. Now David Trinkberger. Lutz along the goal line. Jeremko will track it down in the corner. Through a lot of traffic, loose puck. As Red will clean things up, and here comes Alaska Anchorage the other way. I have no idea if Chris Carlson saw that at all, but uh, there were so many feet and bodies in front of him. Somehow it came off him and cleared to the left side, and the Seawolves were able to clear the zone. Loose puck down low. Just before that was Wicks, who might have had a shot at it, but it's picked up and played out by Charlie Gerard. Hits the referee. The linesman actually on the play, and so the Mavericks can't play it. Trinkberger near side. Sinclair will dump it in. This certainly doesn't look like a one versus eight at the moment, Don. I assume over the length of the evening we'll start to see it. But uh, at the moment, this is a very even contest. Played past Nicholas. No icing on the play, so a race for the puck. Carlson comes out to make a play for the Mavericks. He's still down low. And now we're going to get a penalty against the Mavericks in the corner. And it's going to be a tripping call. We'll take a break, come back with our first power play of the weekend. Back in downtown Mankato, we're tied up 1-1 here about halfway through the first period of play. And Mike Hastings, uh, probably not the start he no. wanted at all and exactly what the coaching staff with the Seawolves and Matt Curley was looking for. They've played physical, they've played fast so far. They got a nice rebound. Now they got an opportunity to take a lead on one of the top-ranked teams in the nation on their home ice in the open round. Yeah, I'd say it's a pretty good start for them. St. Ange held in at the line. Tripping call against Dallas Durads. And I don't know if that's not to say that the Mavericks aren't playing well, just they made one mistake and paid for it. French gets one shot off that's blocked and he just taps it in the corner to uh, allow three new penalty killers on the ice. We talked about the disparity in the penalty units. We're going to keep the face off in front of the Maverick bench. But again, the Mavericks coming in. Top-ranked penalty kill unit in the country. They've also scored for five shorthand goals. They've only given up nine penalty, or power play goals to their opponents. So a little over 91% of 
as far as killing off the penalties. And again, the power play for the Seawolves, seventh in the WCHA, about 14.5%. Numbers have gotten better in recent games against the Midgey State and Fairbanks, as that one is lifted out. But uh, they had been 0 for 20 against the Mavericks, Arizona State, and Bowling Green prior to that. Seawolves do not have a power play goal in four matchups against the Mavericks this year, or 0 and 11. Take your power play and your penalty kill, put your numbers together. You better be in at least the upper 100 teens, somewhere around there, to be considered good on both sides. In on net, and Dryden McKay will make that save. In fact, if you combine all the, the goals scored on the special units, the Mavericks lead the WCHA. They're a plus 29. Yeah. Seawolves minus 17. Yeah, that's rough. That, I mean, that, that's the difference between first and eighth place in the conference right there. I mean, it seriously is. That's a huge, huge disparity. Heard Lou Nanny talking about last night. Three, three passes get you an open look, and, uh, and you'll see it again from time to time uh, tonight. Three tape-to-tape -tape passes will get you an open look. Doesn't necessarily get you a goal, but that's what you have to have to get, uh, get you know, from one side to the other enough and move it quickly enough to have an open look. Nice job there by Rivera sensing that backdoor pass. He picks it off, carries, and dumps it into the corner. Nolan Nicholas comes back. Still 30 seconds left in the power play. Again, we're 1-1 in the first in Mankato. Jake Jeremko just took 10 seconds off the clock, though, by defending in the offensive zone. And we've talked with Mike Hastings about that. The NHL is going that way a lot more. And college hockey said he said he's probably not far behind. It's almost 18 seconds off the clock now, just pressuring on the, on the Maverick offensive zone. Wicks played into the zone through a couple of players near side. Dallas Gerads is out of the box, and the Mavericks back at full strength. It's played into the corner for... Connor Mackey, now Dallas Gerads. Left off for McNeil, he's in the circle. Oh, and he had Lutz on the near side and it went off a skate. Brown, the goal scorer, back the other way. Wicks will float one down low. And a good looking shot. Save is made by Dryden McKay. We're still 1-1 on a Maverick Hockey Weekend here on Flow Hockey TV. The Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center, the site of this quarterfinal action in the WCHA Tournament 2020. The defending champion Mavericks, they've won it three times. And uh, they start their march toward potentially another one tonight, but it's a good start here for Alaska Anchorage with the AC coming in. And again, we're 1-1. One, one. There's about eight minutes left to go in the first. In fact, Seawolves out shooting the Mavericks at this point which is a real rarity, as any Maverick fan knows. Souter, and, and I think the fans wanted to hold well, there, and Shackle, I think they're right. Yeah, yeah, he was all over him, and even Hastings yep. comes over, and it's like, how more obvious can that get? Yep. But Mavericks don't get the call. Toomey. Michaelis up on top. Zmolik. Zmolik gets past Hassan. Michaelis. Trying to work it toward the front of the net. Toomey, low angle. Oh, and he was trying to feather over a pass to Souter. Toomey, a couple of unselfish passes tonight when he probably could have had decent looks himself. Now to the far side. Michaelis, and that one comes just through the top of the crease. That was a great look. A nice pass and just unable to finish. Smolik is able to hold temporarily, but it's cleared. Side, near side, Mackey played off a skate into the zone, and then it's played ahead for Fry, but that pass fails to connect, and it'll be an icing call against Anchorage. And Fry was pretty well gassed anyway, but man, if, if, if he pokes that uh, puck away originally, he's all by himself, and then if they get the pass to him, he's all by himself again. And I know he's a little bit disappointed that that didn't work out, but uh, he might have been going in all alone on Dryden McKay, which the Maverick fans don't want to see at all tonight. And Mike Hastings certainly doesn't want to see that. Corey Renwick steps in along with Smith for the faceoff. Mavericks get the draw. Mackey shoots one down toward the net, but it's off the leg. Picked up by Buono. Heikaverda. Renwick is able to carry out and clear. 
Dallas Gerrard's trying to play a few, a few players. Picked up now by Smith, and the Mavericks will regroup. Long lead pass for Napravnik. Smith overskates the puck, tapped out. McNeely. Smith puts on a wrister, and that one is kicked out. Napravnik trying to fight for puck possession, along with DeGraff. Now Gerrard's behind the net. Heike Verda to the far side will pick up and carry. Lifts it out to center ice and Carroll comes back for the Mavericks. Love the pace that we're playing at here. Not a lot of whistles and we're flying up and down the ice. Both teams going pretty hard so far. Gerrads is able to get into the zone where Carlson comes out to make a play. In the, long, in the long run, Don, that has to be an advantage Mavericks if we play this fast for three periods. Drayson Pears to the far side, gets a return feed. Pass does not get through Walker Door. He plays it ahead for Rivera. Now in the zone, and we're going to get an offside call. Oh, Rivera lost a helmet. Oh, all right. Thank you. It might be nothing more than that. He's not getting up real fast. No, no, he, he got dumped pretty good, I think. Well, he's got to figure out a little bit of hockey here, too, and yep. put that in the right spot so the helmet fits. I don't know if he, if he uh, whacked his head or not. He's kind of checking to see if he's got something dripping other than ice from the top of his head. It's hard to tell. No, he needs a little repair. Yeah. So the Mavericks will send out the goal scorer, Lutz, along with Jeremko, who had the assist. Charlie Gerard up front. Mavericks with another win on the faceoff. It's Molik, Charlie Gerard trying to get past Trinkberger. Gerard shied. Puts one behind the net, Zmolik. Lutz tries to bring it out in front, but there was no one home for the Mavericks. It's played out to center ice. Brown set down behind the net. Jeremko. Lead pass, Charlie Gerard tries to bring it to the forehand side, but Trinkberger had played that one well. Pairs behind the net for Trinkberger. It's a bit of a stretch pass that we're going to see a little bit more of tonight for the Mavericks than we normally see. Mike Hastings usually likes to come out uh, without going a real long pass, but uh, this is the, the opportunity with the way the Seawolves are, are going to play them tonight that they think they can hit them with some long passes, so they're going to try to do that tonight. Icing's going to be the call. We'll take the face off back in the Mavericks zone with 418 left to go in the first period of play. Other action in the WCHA this weekend. First round of the playoffs. As as we mentioned, Michigan Tech at Northern. That game already underway. Lake Superior State is at Bemidji State. And then later on, Bowling Green, the fifth seed, will be playing up in Fairbanks against the Nanooks. Shots are 8-7 in favor of the Mavericks. Kind of a low number for the Mavericks as late as we are in the period. And the Seawolves, I think they got to be very happy with where they are right now. I know the score is tied, and you say, well, of course they're happy, but I think even more so just the way that they're playing. They're playing physical, they're playing fast. Well, one of the questions I, I asked both coaches in the pregame is, are we going to see the same kind of game that Anchorage put on last time they saw the Mavericks, and it was a 2-2 game you know, officially in the books, and actually uh, outside of a last second, literally last second goal by Shide, it would have been a Seawolf win, or is this going to be the type of a game where the Seawolves, is, here's a chance down low, it's blocked. Mavericks have put seven goals on the board twice this year against the Seawolves. Well, I think the thing was that the Mavericks were so short-handed that night that uh, a lot of fans thought that that was, you know, a lot to do with the game being 2-2, and I tend to agree with them, but so far the Seawolves playing very, very well. And you would hope, you know, with your season on the line, that you'd come out and play your best, and they are doing that so far. Gerads, Amit. Here comes Naprovnik. He's got Dallas Gerads. Naprovnik down low in the slot. There's a rebound given up. Still, it's score! He hung with it long enough. Dallas Gerads with the finish for his seventh goal of the season, and the Mavericks regain the lead. Mavericks take advantage of a bouncing puck at center ice, and Naprovnik carries in. Forces the issue, and Dallas Gerads cleans up to give the Mavericks a nice goal here late in the first. Napravna kept waiting for the goaltender to commit. He finally goes ahead and puts a shot on, and Gerads with the cleanup. Dallas Gerads 
Now 11 points in 11 games. That's his seventh goal of the season. You can see how Dallas Giraffe pounded the glass after he wanted that one bad, and he finished. He and Brown are leaning into each other. They each have a goal now. Yep, and Wicks is going to go yep. on a cross check as he dropped Smith in the faceoff circle. Just a bad penalty. We'll what a terrible back. penalty to take. Mavericks will be right back on a power play. They're first of the night, and they're ahead. Too. Right on the opening faceoff after the goal by Dredge, you'll see Wicks come up and... I mean, that's just such a bad penalty to take. That's just incredible. Exactly what the coaching staff did not want because the Mavericks come in with one of the better power plays in the country, although Coach Hastings talks about it's a group that needs to play a little bit better. They have more success. Smith, Michaelis, back to Smith one more time. Shy, down low for Michaelis. Out in front, oh, and Toomey had a tip, and that went just wide. Smith, as the Mavericks will kind of get repositioned here. Smith down low. Michaelis behind the net, and then he tried to feed Shy, who was sneaking in down the slot, and it hops over his stick, and the Mavericks will regroup. This penalty could be a game-deciding penalty, to be completely honest. If the Mavericks make it 3-1, it's going to be very difficult for the Seawolves to score four to beat this team. Shied with a quick shot, and that's why Toomey will get to the boards and try to hold. Toomey brings it out. Got a couple players out in front. Shied looks for an angle. I don't know if Carlson got some of that or not. Out in front still, loose puck. And Carlson very alertly as the puck, which is sitting there on top of the crease, jumps out and covers it up for the faceoff. You know, and he has no toe picks on those skates, so it's kind of hard to just dive the way he did there. That was a, a heck of an athletic move by Chris Carlson, the 6'2 goaltender out of Centerville, Virginia, with a dive there for an open puck. Mavericks, 36 for 137 on the year, 26.3%. There was almost another one, the power or penalty kill for Alaska Anchorage. They've uh, killed off 115 of 152 opportunities. The kill percentage right at around 75%, nowhere near what it needs to be. But so far, the Mavericks haven't scored yet, and they uh, are down to 40 seconds left in the man advantage as Jeremko will take it into the zone. Jeremko behind the net, out in front, trying to feed one. That was Napravnik breaking down, but it was broken up. Charlie Girard behind the net. Jeremko, Napravnik, Connor Mackey. Girard, there's Napravnik. 15 seconds left in the power play. Jeremko, that's off his shoulder behind the net for Lutz. Napravnik near side, Charlie Girard. And off the shoulder of Carlson, he uh, is able to cover up before it hits the ice. Good pass. Gerard handled it pretty well. Got off a good shot, but Carlson was able to go from the left to the right pipe and cover it up. I think if Gerard uh, could have got that off maybe just a hair faster, he might have had a better opportunity, but kind of had a catch and throw rather than just all in one motion. Mavericks just three seconds left to go in the power play. 110 left in the first. Mavericks up 2-1. to one. Whoa, heavy hit oh. as Rivera gets up very slowly. Doer, Rivera up on top, back at full strength. So we're five on five right now as Rivera will bring it in between the circles down low. As Molik will try to find one, still loose. And once again with a quick glove, Carlson covers up. Pressure definitely picking up for the Mavericks. Shots are now 13-7. It was 7-7 at one time. And a lot more action being down in those Seawolves end over the last three or four minutes. Obviously, the penalty had something to do with it, but Mavericks looking for one here to really put this in danger for the Seawolves as they head in the locker room. Down one, you're okay. If it's down two really late, I think that makes it pretty disheartening. Mavericks come out with their top unit of Michaelis between Souter and Smolik. Mavericks will get this draw to me. Smolik at the point, and then his drop pass is picked up by Brown. Wicks will carry the other way. To the far side, Souter will pick it up for the Mavericks. Play it off, tended for Michaelis. Dumped right back in by the Seawolves. Hookinson to the far side for Souter. 
Zmolik is able to tip it out of the zone, but Sinclair will fire it in. Loose puck will be picked up, and the Mavericks will have numbers the other way. Michaelis, Toomey, down for Michaelis, out in front, SCORE! Oh, what a killer. Mark Michaelis with just a little bit of shuck and jive right at the very last second. Five holes of it, it's 3-1 Mavericks. Just a little bit of a head shake, and that's all it took. Opened it up, and he dumped it right underneath him. Uh, Michaelis, the patience was yep. very nice. Yep, no question. A younger player might have gone early, but that's a really tough goal for the Seawolves to give up with only about eight seconds left in the period. Parker Toomey with the pass, and you see Michaelis just wait till it opens up, and he dumps it in. 3-1 Mavericks, and that's just a killer. They have so many weapons on this team, and having Mark Michaelis back obviously is the most important as we get into the playoffs. 1952 for Michaelis, his 20th goal of the season. And that is going to be a difficult one for the Seawolves to swallow. They had played so well early in the period. We were tied at one after goals were exchanged by Lutz and Brown, but then Gerrads and Michaelis for the Mavericks. And it's the Mavericks with a 3-1 to one lead as one period is in the books for Mankato. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll hear from one of the Mavericks and along with some other stuff that we have to bring you. We're excited to bring you WCHA Hockey from downtown Mankato, where it's a Maverick Hockey Weekend here on Flow Hockey TV. Welcome back to downtown Mankato. The score is now 3-1. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Seawolves of Alaska Anchorage. I'm Marissa Voss. I'm joined by junior forward number 16, Reggie Lutz. Reggie, you get a you get a pass from Jake off a face off dish in the back of the net. Was that a design play or kind of instincts? Uh, just kind of instinct. Just got a good good hop off the face off and kind of got a lucky bounce. Uh, just kind of had a quick shot there and got got a little lucky with it. So there's a definite energy change from the beginning of the first period to the end of the first period. What components went into that change? I think just playing our game, playing hard and uh, possessing the puck, not uh, not turning it over easily, just uh, standing over pucks and taking it to the net. So there's been a little bit of a pushback, more than expected from UAA. What can you do in this ne next game to kind of contain them throughout this entire game? It's a playoff, so we, we know they're going to make a hard push, and uh, every team that we play from now on is going to make a hard push. And just uh, stick to our game, play hard, and make sure we're getting our bumps on them. Thanks, Reggie. Good luck in the second. Thank you. Coming back from break, there's going to be some senior spotlight content coming your way, guys. Stay tuned. Don Westfall, Dan McCarger, trying to get some nutrition in here at the break, Dan. <laughs> it's been a busy first period. It was a busy first period for the Mavericks as well, because you're going to talk about three Maverick goals here in our highlights. All even strength goals in the first period of play, and it begins with Reggie Lutz's 12th of the season from Jake Jeremko at 441. Mavericks up 1-0. Luke Brown, though, with the deflection, his eighth of the season from Nolan Nicholas and Alex Fry at 5 656 makes it one apiece. And the Mavericks with a couple goals in the final five minutes of the period. Dallas Gerrads from Julian Neprovdick and Nathan Smith. Even strength at 16.48. Then just a beauty from Souter and Toomey to Mark Michaelis. Michaelis with the finish at 19.52. And the Mavericks lead 3-1 after one period of play. Johnson goal 20 to 10 in favor of the Mavericks. Attempted or are, uh, I think those are reversed. They're probably the shots that attempted shots are reversed on that one. And face-offs, Mavericks winning that battle by a 13-6 face-off battle. Out-of-town scores, North Dakota Omaha scoreless in the second. Lake Superior up on Bemidji, 1-0 in the second. Notre Dame and Minnesota are scoreless in the second period in their first round action of the Big Ten. Northern Michigan and Michigan Tech are tied at one in the third. St. Cloud up on UMD in the second. And Denver and Colorado College are yet to get underway. North Dakota in the pairwise, number one, Minnesota State, Cornell, BC, and UMD. Those five teams are all considered to be guaranteed 100% locks for the tournament. I think Denver is just right on the very edge of being a lock. I think they're like 96% of being in Penn State, UMass, Clarkson, and Bemidji rounding out the top ten. Well, it's a dangerous time for those so-called yep. bubble teams because you just don't know how some of these automatic qualifiers Correct. the conference champions get. But Beavers get through this weekend. The Beavers are probably okay. But I'm sure they're thinking they've got to get to the championship to be certain that they're in. And for the Mavericks, uh, the big thing there, Dan? Uh, just stay in the top four. Top four. You get the number yep. one seed in that region as you take a look at our pairings here for the quarterfinals. 
And again, uh, winner of this series takes on the other Alaska in Bowling Green. So hopefully it'll be well, is Bowling it, Green. I believe it's reseeded. Well, the way they had the bracket sitting there, that's well, that the would yet. be. But I believe the Mavericks will get whoever is the lowest seed right. remaining. So which, if, it, if it works out according to seeds, it right. would be the which should be yes, yes, correct. So we we're both right, which correct. is the way we like it. Absolutely, no question about it. Oh, and a goalie changed yes. already, and that was a, a, you know, it was just such a good start for Alaska Anchorage, yep. but after just one period of play, uh, we've uh, made a change already in goalie for Brendan it. Perone, 5'9", 169-pound freshman out of New York. He played for New Jersey, the New Jersey Titans of the NAHL. 0-2-3 on the year, an 8.75 save percentage, and a 3.22 goals against, and they just figured they got to try anything to stem the tide with the Mavericks. Putting up two very late in the second period, or first period of play to get that two goal lead. Well, I will say this, and we talked about it a couple times, but the number of rebounds that Carlson was giving up. Yes. We talked about a few times he was able to get out there with a quick glove hand and cover up, but, you know, the Dallas Gerard goal would have been a, kind of just a, a puck sitting there in the crease area, and, uh, you know, maybe that was part of it, but like you said, there's. There's really no tomorrow because nope. uh, the Seawolves, if they're going to win this series, they're going to have to win tonight. They're not going to, I don't think, come back and win back-to-back no. -back on a Friday or a Saturday and a Sunday. So pretty important game for the Seawolves if they're going to try to get through this first weekend. Matt Curley said neither team will win this series tonight, but I would beg to differ with him. If the Mavericks win this, uh, they'll win this series tonight because they're not going to lose two games in a row on their home ice to the number eight team in the, in the conference. Now, if they should lose tonight, then all the Seawolves have to do is win Saturday or Sunday, and that gets a little bit easier. I will say this. Nolan Nicholas is a he's very battling, committed yes. guy. Yep, he's going to keep it in the corner. Which he did, but it's finally dug out by Michaela Souter behind the net. Now Zmolik near side for Lutz. Mavericks are going to cycle a little bit to try to get a new line of skaters out. Charlie Girard out of nowhere comes from behind, plays it out in front on top for Zmolik. Low angle shot, comes wide here to the near side and it's picked up by Court, punched out to center ice. Tough thing being Perone is he didn't get any work at all to warm up. So he's, uh, he saw very few shots in the warm ups and that was a long time ago. Jeremko tries to carry in but Heike Verde is there. Long lead pass for Scheid, tap back in. Heike Verde one more time. Smith behind the net. Play down low. Heike Verde. Dallas Gerads will float one along the boards. Naprovnik for Smith. Smith trying to find a way to get past pairs. Dallas Gerads bouncing puck as it got redirected. Kind of a knuckler went in on Perrin and he's able to kick it into the corner. Now Naprovnik will poke away from him. It'll be carried out to center ice by Nazareth who just dumps it into the zone. Along the boards. Perrin. Now Trinkberger, as Perrin had played it ahead and out for St. Ange, but it was dumb back in. St. Ange one more time, near side for Nash. Mavericks will pick up a loose puck with Walker Doer. Gets around one in the corner with Drayson and Pears. Doer to the far side. Smolik is off the bench to come and make a play. Smolik behind the net. Door fires one down low. It's redirected by French. And it just kind of stayed right on top of the crease. Good look for the Mavericks. Nash is poked away by Toomey, who had just come off the bench. St. Ange with a shot that's blocked. Still in the zone and now poked out with the help of Toomey. Nicholas, far side for Sinclair. McKay is left off along the boards. Mitchell. Play pass 
Nolan Nicholas will now race for the puck. Sinclair comes back to help out as Doerr was making a rush for the Mavericks. If that puck fell anywhere else for French than other than right between his feet, he probably has a goal to make it 4-1. Masson. Souter. Here comes Toomey with Souter, and it's broken up in a nice defensive play by Heike Verde to get back. Probably the third time that Parker Toomey has had a chance to take a shot, and he's passed it up. Aaron left it off there, and DeGraff tips it out through neutral ice zone. Pucks, oh, the sticks all over with debris on the ice. Couple of sticks. Still one left out there as Hookinson plays it. Wicks lost the puck, and Hookinson picks up for Minnesota State. Jeremko will bring it into the zone, works through a couple of players. Just goes wide of the net on the near side. Let's down low, puts one through the top of the crease. Bounces in on net. Perrin has seen enough of that. He'll take a face off in the zone. We'll take our first break of the second period of play. Mavericks on top, three to one. Don Westfall along with Dan McCarger back. You see the uh, series in recent years between these two clubs. And Mavericks haven't lost to uh, Anchorage uh, since February of 2017. See the last sweep, and again, the Mavericks three wins on the season. And as we mentioned right off the top of the broadcast, these two teams have only met once in the WCHA playoffs, and that was all the way back in 2000 when the Mavericks were a 2-1 overtime winner and then came back and won the second game as well. That was a 3-2 score, and that, those two games, the last in the coaching career here in Mankato, of Don Bros, which would, the career would end the following week up in the WCHA Final Five. Certainly got to appreciate the effort so far by the Sea Wolves. Just kind of a little unlucky couple of minutes late in the first period is the difference in this hockey game. Down low, Lutz with a little bit of room to work with, but a nice job there defensively to collapse on the play. That was Fry coming back to help out. Still in the zone. Finally played out, but McNeely will dump it right back in for the Mavericks. Trinkberger. Dallas Drads just plays it to an open wing. And now it's dumped into the Maverick zone. Mackey with a long lead pass. Drads controls along the boards. Still in. Smith does a nice job to just hold it at the blue line and still, <laughs> wow, how is he able to keep, did a 360 on his backside and was still able to hold the zone at that point. That was a little Harlem Globetrotter curly kneel work right there. I was looking to hear Sweet George Brown by yeah. the band, yeah. Far side to Provnik trying to chip it out. Out near the slot area, it's picked up by the Mavericks and played. Zmolik. Zmolik behind the net, left off. Nope, still out in front. Oh, and it's a great look down low. Heron looked like he was going to cover up on the play originally, and then somehow Zmolik had it. I saw the, poke, or the puck exposed there a little bit, and really dangerous play and a good yeah, effort no, by Zmolik. No question that Perrin, uh, it, it sounded exactly, or looked like exactly what you said, is that he was going to get a cover and end up not happening. Dallas and that nearly got poked in. The Mavericks uh, working hard there, but Seawolves survived for a moment anyway. A lot of action out front as Molik does a nice job coming in on that play into the zone and creating a golden opportunity for the Mavericks. Seems unlikely when you have a goalie that is averaging 1.3 against, but you're only down a couple goals. You make it down three against this club, and it's going to be a really, really difficult thing to come back. Here's a chance, Doer down low. Oh, and that one is just one time wide by French. Boy, they turned that around so quickly into two on one break, that's incredible. Lifted out to center ice, bouncing puck that'll be dumped in by St. Ange. In fact, it went in on net and McKay has to uh, just hold on with the glove and he'll take a face off the rare one in his zone. You talk about turning the puck over and ended up having a two-on-one the other way. The Mavericks just did it to him and, and nearly put this game away at 4-1. You're going to look at it right there. Just about. Right on the near side, you can see 
Braun had the locker down. Make that save. Renwick, along with Michaelis, DeGraff with the shot off the faceoff is wide. Hukinson will play it out of the zone, bouncing puck, and here's a chance now. Toomey and Souter. Toomey with a quick shot, and that one is up high. Carroll at the point holds and dumps it behind the net. Trinkberger played off the boards. Masson, and here come the Seawolves two on two. Michaelis is back to help out defensively, and Nice job with the stick to poke it in the corner. Souter for Hukinson. Tipped out of the zone by Michaelis. Mavericks will pick it up, and here comes Toomey with Michaelis. He's got Souter down low and fires it right into the covering, sliding Perron, who was there and looked like there was a little right away, but well played by Perron. In the yeah, net. no, Brandon did a nice job there, just sliding over. as a good three-on-two uh, break for the Mavericks that time. Things starting to pick up here, just the Mavericks applying more and more pressure and getting odd man rushes. The more odd, odd man rushes they get, the more dangerous they become, and they'll, uh, they'll get a couple here if they continue to do that. Seawolves is going to have to figure out a way to not get, uh, get caught back on the defensive end like they have the last couple times. Lutz trying to feed Jeremko on the far side. Jeremko trying to work through a little bit of traffic as players collide now at the point. McNeely will come back to cover up. At center ice, played to the near side. McNeely for the Mavericks, bouncing puck that no one has control of. And then McNeely on the far side will sweep it to Lutz who can just send it out. Near side, Charlie Girard trying to get it away from Nolan Nicholas. Hunter Mackey is back. Shied off the boards. Jeremko. Jeremko to the far side. Poked away defensively, and here comes St. Ange back the other way. Shied, long lead pass for Dallas Gerads. In the corner, Naprovnik is after it. Court trying to clear, but Smith breaks that up. To the far side, Buono. Off the boards is out to center ice and Shy turns it around. Mike Hastings told us in the pregame show that we will see some longer passes tonight than normal because he wants to get out and run and he thinks they can do that in this against this team. And we've seen it a little bit more now in the last five minutes. Gerads onto the stick of Napravnik. Napravnik down low, trying to find a way to feed one to Zmolik, and I think the uh, net goal, came off. Yeah. That, see, to me, that should be interference. Zmolik doesn't have the puck, and he's being held up in the middle of the ice there. That should be an interference call. Didn't, didn't happen, though, and it's amazing how often you can do stuff like that in front of the net. Looks like we have a break. Oh, they're going to leave it here. One of the officials is coming over and say they want to keep the play going and no timeout taken. Looked like the Mavericks. In fact, they'd open the door to get the uh, ice cleaned up along the yep. boards, Dan. Well, we're inside 10-minute mark. Usually that would be it, but the net came off, and so we're going to have the face off to the ready goaltender. Well, this crowd, you mentioned yep. it right away off the broadcast, and now it started to fill in as we're at the halfway point of the contest. We'll be well over 4,000 tonight. I would think so, and, and we've had nights where it's 1,200 for the first game of the, of the playoffs, so uh, that's a good job by everybody. Sales and marketing and all the fans who showed up tonight. Pairs has a couple of Mavericks on either side of him. Rivera digging at it. There's a swat by French to keep it in. Doer behind the net. We were trying to get away from Trinkberger. Seawolves with just one shot on goal this period. Doer, what a great job just trying to hold possession behind the net to create something. Shows his strength. Now played to the near side. Pairs is ahead for court. Finally out of the zone. Amit will come back to play it for Minnesota State. Off the boards for Rivera, who will swat it on his second attempt. Still can't get in the zone, but Amit carries in. Fired in on net. Covered up by Aaron on the play. And we'll take another break as the Mavericks still with a 3-1 to lead. Acknowledging our veteran of the game. 
Talking a real war hero right there. Also had a nice chat at the first intermission. Ian Shine's aunt from Kansas City, Metro Kansas City, is in the building tonight with really? Ian's grandpa and grandma. Nice. Don't get up to many games. They enjoy our broadcast, of course, on of course, Hockey yep. TV, but I'm glad to see her. She just wanted to stop by and say thanks for the past four years. And, Excellent. You know, I said, once you're a Maverick, you're yeah, always absolutely. a Maverick. You can keep coming back and watching us on Flow Hockey. and. She indicated she would do that, but she's uh, planning on seeing a few more games, a few more weekends. Nice. Ian Scheid was in the studio at uh, Radio Mankato with the trophy on, was it Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday. That was kind of fun. Yep. His Aunt Lori, so that was kind of a nice discussion. We, uh, we've had a few parents drop by in recent years, especially those of the seniors. Yep. Who... Uh, Sometimes those uh, long distances don't aren't able to make a trip for a weekend series here. And again, they've all, always been very gracious through Flow Hockey TV. It's a nice way for them to be able to kind of stay connected and watch the games live. Connor Mackey. Sometimes they live quite a, a ways away, so they aren't able to be at the games, but they can certainly see them, and that's awesome. Charlie Girard down low. Oh, and he had Mackey right on top of the crease, but he was tied up defensively on the play. Still in the zone, Charlie Gerard one more time trying to find a way to drag it back and maybe use some type of a screen out in front, but lost the puck in doing so. Zmolik, Jeremko tapped in. These odd man rushes are coming more often and more often though, Don, and that's, that's something that you, you know that they're going to put one away here sooner or later because you can't just keep on coming three on one, two on one on the goalie and get away with it. St. Ange dumps it into the corner. Smolik is there to help it along. Nazareth. Now Mitchell. Zach Nazareth one more time. Bodies falling. Jeremko has it. And the Mavericks will bring it out to center ice. Shot up high. It'll be sent all the way down. Trying to feed Hassan breaking down. But Smolik will also go into the play. And that will find an opportunity. Shied. Carried in by Lutz. Out in front, Smith. Oh, score! He got the count. The original shot didn't go, but it bounced down the back of the goaltender into the net. Mavericks with a 4-1 lead. Smith got that one so deep in the yep. slot between the circles, there was no way for Ron to be able to come out and cut down the angle. I thought it might have gone in originally, but it must have hit... Hit the crossbar, then bounced off the back. Maybe we'll get it. Either way, it's yes. going to be a goal it's for a Smith. Goal. It, it, it either went in twice or once, but either way, it counts. Smith is eighth of the season, and the Mavericks now with a 4-1 lead. Seven minutes left to go here in the second. The way Perron acted, it was like he came off the crossbar and then off his back and in. Scoring at 12.59 of the second period. And net, and covered up by McKay. Well, it's a monumental task for the Seawolves now. It was going to be very tough, but to get this one evened up now is going to be very, very tough. Very few teams have got to four on this team all year long, and the Seawolves are not blessed with a ton of scoring in the first place. So, Lutz and Scheid getting the assist on that goal by Smith, and big point there for the guy we just mentioned, Ian Scheid. Ian Scheid, yep. Tell you about that in a minute when I get a chance. Wicks in the corner now. Andy Carroll still behind the net. It's almost tapped out in front. Wicks one more time with it. Tap through and it'll be carried now by Doerr. Doerr to the far side for Rivera. Rivera behind the net will play it out in front. Cleaned up defensively by Anchorage. French after it one more time. Played in on that and then... Ron will cover up. That point by Scheid now gives him 96 in his career. That ties him for Division I defenseman all-time scoring for the Mavericks. He's tied now with Kurt Davis and Zach Palmquist. Only two uh, players in front of those trio of defensemen. Mike Weinkoff and Dave Sotzer, who played for the Mavericks back in the 70s. That's incredible. 96 is a good number when you're playing defense. 157 games in 90. This is his 158th game. Is 96 point. 
at the Division I level all time. That now ties him for 17th with Kurt Davis, Hayes, and Palmquist one more time. So you're in the, some pretty high cotton right there. If you can put that number of points on. And Scheid has been one of the steadiest defensemen we've seen in a long time here. Both ends of the ice for the Mavericks. Got to be completely honest. Uh, he was a little bit shy at the radio station. That's, I think, kind of his nature. Yep. He was, uh, I didn't know him well, uh, know him on the ice. Toomey with a chance again down deep, and that one went off a skate, and the Mavericks are starting to buzz, Dan. Well, they've been going pretty hard here for quite a while, and it, uh, it's just kind of a, a war of attrition where they keep on coming and they keep on coming, and sooner or later the uh, dam breaks and you end up giving up seven goals, and that's kind of what this looks like it's headed for. Ike Verda. He picked up off the boards by Zmolik. Lutz. Lutz is able to score. <laughs> They're going to wave it off because it was played with a yeah. high stick. He caught it with a high stick and shot I, it with a low stick. It's I a don't heck care. of a play. It, it was still awesome yeah. to see. Yeah. He, he caught it with a high <laughs> stick. If he, if, he caught, if he catches it with his hand, that's different. But, yeah, he knocked it out with a high stick and then knocked it in. Just the reaction yeah. time. There wasn't a lot of distance between no. where the play came from. Fans Think, don't understand. Right. but Now they're going to look at it. They're, they're saying play with a high stick. Will, will they look at it to see no. if it was actually played with a high stick or not? Maverick fans. Mike Casey, happy. yeah, here's going to be the clearing attempt. They are not going to look to see. Well, yeah, but it's, it's definitely, it's definitely high. Yeah. yeah, it's high enough. But it was, it was yeah. just still yeah, that's, awesome to that's see. That's pretty crazy. Wow. He caught it and threw it in all in one motion. Fans should realize if Hastings isn't arguing, yeah. and even the players knew right away what was going on. I mean, you, you could see it was high. I didn't know for sure if it was going to be high enough or not, but that's a heck of a play whether it, uh, whether it was high enough or not. Yeah, that was uh, something you don't see every day. That's a that's a Sports Center type highlight, even though it doesn't count. Knock it out of midair. It yeah. sets on the ground, and you're yep. able to just one time it into the. I liked it. Yep. I say if somehow he could have reacted quick enough and got a hand up to stop it and drop it down, he would have been able to score. But I don't know if his arm is long enough to get it. Here's to the near side. Shackles able to knock it out of the zone. Nazareth for Fry, and if Nazareth's going to have to clear, it would be offside's call. Not certain I've ever seen that before, Don, just like that. Charlie Girard to the far side. It's broken up by Nazareth as the pass was attempted for Jeremko. Nicholas will dump it into the zone. Smolik will come back, left off for Jeremko. Side ahead for Lutz, taps it into the zone. Behind the net, Sinclair will pick it up. Nicholas is up high, almost hit our scoreboard. Shot down low, you heard the save made by Case Sinclair will turn around one more time and Dryden McKay has seen enough. He'll take a face off in the zone. We'll take a break with the Mavericks on top for one. Mavericks on top 4-1 to one here with 4-10 left to go in the second period of play. See Alaska Anchorage, their first playoff appearance in six years. And again, it had been a pretty good start for Matt Curley and his team tonight. They were able to get a quick goal to counter the Maverick initial tally. And we were 1-1 halfway through. In fact, about 15 minutes into the first period of play. But then the Mavericks got a couple of quick goals. That one by Michaelis with just eight seconds left in the period. Dan, you could just kind of yeah, sense was, right that there. That was a killer. That was just a tough one. And a heck of a play. Toomey to Michaelis and Michaelis with the finish. Gave the Mavericks a 3-1 lead. And you think that's kind of insurmountable with the way the Mavericks play defense and the goaltending they have. But this goal here to make it 4-1, uh, very, very tough for the Seawolves to come back from. But they're, they're still battling out here. Doer dumps it in. It's past Buono. Walker Doer has been really good for quite a while now. McNeely. Sends one toward the net, door behind the net. There's a shot, a yeah. cross check, wow. and that one is. Yeah, that's got it. That's. You're going to the box. I, I can't Dewar. imagine this isn't going to be five minutes. This is from behind and right Dewar. against the wall. He got up quickly, but. Yeah, he takes exception yeah. to that one on a cross checking call. And yeah, for where that happened and stuff, those are the ones you just got to get out of hockey. That's so dangerous. Now he popped right up again. They're going to talk about it here. 
They're putting two up on the board. Man, that's just such a dangerous play. 16-16. Mavericks will go on the power play for the second time tonight. If you want to get that stuff out of hockey down, the only way you're going to get it out is make it a five-minute penalty every time. That's a cross check from behind right along the boards like that or, you know, a little bit of ways away from the boards. It's just so incredibly dangerous. Uh, Mike Hastings is kind of questioning yeah. the uh, yeah. fact it's and not I, a major. I completely understand why. So the Mavericks again 0 for 1 with their lone power play back late in the first period of play. We mentioned the fact that the uh, Seawolves had not scored a power play goal in the previous four games against this Maverick team as Scheid has it. Scheid one more time. McHale's will tee up a shot. And that one is kicked out to the corner by Grant. McHale's. One more time, plays catch with Souter. Shy tees up, score! Oof, duh. that was heavy. Yep, and you know what? Michaelis knows this is what's going on. Yep. He got the puck because Shy now is the all time leading scorer for defensemen at the Division I level. What a way to uh, put your name at the top of that list. And it's a power play tally for the Mavericks to make it 5 1. Man, Ian Shy, that was a bomb. This is an absolute rocket. There's no time for a goalie to react to that one at all. Great pass. Michaelis tees it up for him and shied with the easy finish. And the Mavericks starting to run away with this one. The Mavericks a 5-1 lead. Making power play uh, numbers now one for two on the night. Carroll. Rivera. Broken up by Trinkberger trying to feed Doer. Out in front. Ron makes that save. Played out to center ice. Michaelis and Souter each picking up their second points of the night. Matt Curley were really trying to encourage his team after that goal. He was trying to pump him up beyond as much as he could, saying, guys, don't give up, don't quit. You can't back down. You got to keep fighting. Rivera, Napravnik, near side. Smolik will play it off the boards. Smoke along the goal line, puts one in. It's right underneath the arm there of Perron, and he'll just cover up and take the face off. Michaelis, for those of you tracking stuff like this with two points tonight, now with 159 in his career, just three points behind Matt Leitner. I've heard of him. And uh, that'll be uh, then at just two points behind Aaron Fox. So Michaelis conceivably has a, has a shot yep. at this record despite the fact he missed a number of games about a, a month ago. Smith poked away from him but Napravnik is there. Far side. Amit puts one in down low. Kicked aside. Smith one more time. Nash plays it along the boards. Amit pinches in to hold. Smith and Buono after it. Taylor Lance played off the boards. St. Ange will just tap it into the zone. Emmett will get back. Smolik with the lead pass. Dallas Gerads drops it off for Napravnik. Napravnik gets toyed there with Lance. Still Napravnik with it. Penalty coming up against the Seawolves. And as it's played by Nicholas. We're going to get a hooking call against the Seawolves, and the Mavericks will go right back on a power play, having just scored with the extra attacker. They just keep on coming and keep on coming. They just keep on pressuring you, and there he, he really had to hold on. Otherwise, he was going in all alone on the goaltender, so you grab a hold of a waist and try to slow him down a little bit and take your chances on the power play or on the penalty kill. But Julian Naprovnik was coming right in on his goaltender if he doesn't do something. Mavericks will have 134 left to work here in the second before time would run out if they do not score. So roughly around 26 seconds will carry over into the third. Mavericks with that 5-1 to one lead as it's cleared off the faceoff. Provnik, Charlie Girard near side for Lutz. 
Lutz can't handle that pass cleanly, and the Mavericks will regroup. Gerard, or Jeremko there gets a return feed, shot down low, loose puck. And just before Lutz can get there, it's swept aside defensively. Charlie Gerard up on top, Jeremko. Mavericks will now get set up on the power play. Lutz puts it off a of body, still in the slot. That one's off a of body yet one more time. Charlie Gerard. Lutz for Jeremko. Connor Mackey. Jeremko. Lutz tees up and doesn't get all of that one. Into the corner, Sinclair can't control. Up on top, Mackey is able to get there before out of the zone. Jeremko, and then it's poked away. And now it will come out with about 22 seconds left to go in the second. Charlie Gerard, far side. Toomey will carry in. Weaver on a couple of players. <laughs> Still has it. Trying to feed one down low for Charlie Gerard. Shied with just a couple of seconds left. Toomey tees one up. Oh, and it kicked out before Naprovna could get a rebound. Another shot in on that. And the horn blows. And again, we'll carry over 26 seconds of this power play into the third. But the Mavericks extend their lead here in the second. Goals by Smith and Scheid. And it's now the Mavericks a 5-1 lead after two periods of play. We will take a break. And we'll come back for the second intermission in downtown Mankato where it's a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Here are the WCHA playoffs on Flow Hockey TV. Welcome back to downtown Mankato, where the score is now 5-1. Your Minnesota State Mavericks are leading the Seawolves of Alaska Anchorage. I'm Marissa Voss, and I'm joined by freshman forward number eight, Nathan Smith. Nathan, you guys started off a little sloppy, but are maintaining the puck really well throughout this game. What's led to that change? Uh, coach came in, just said we got to be more aggressive. Um, just be better in the offensive zone, keep shooting the puck, and get the pucks low. So. You guys have held UAA to minimal shots on goal. What's been the keys to such lockdown defense? Uh, just defending, you know, that's all we got to do. Just be strong defensively, have all five in a picture and have our forwards back check and it's, it's, a, it's a group effort, so. You had a beautiful goal out there. What components went into such amazing goal? Uh, I was just coming to the middle and Reggie made a great pass. I don't know, I went through the guy's legs and uh, just caught it shot. Thanks, Nathan. Good luck in the third. Thank you. Coming back from break, we'll have some more spotlight content coming at you guys. Stay tuned. Just about ready to start the third period here in Mankato on a Maverick Hockey Weekend. Um, Westfall along with Dan McCarger. It was a 1-1 game halfway through the first. We thought things were going to get interesting, Dan. And then the Mavericks a couple of goals late in the first to make it a 3-1 game. They extended to a 5-1 with a couple more goals here in the second. Goal number four was Nathan Smith, even strength from Reggie Lutz and Ian Scheid at 12.59 to make it 4-1. We'll look at it right there. And then Ian Scheid from Lucas Souter and Mark Michaelis at 1643 to make it 5-1. And the Mavericks with a 5-1 lead after two shots on goal are now are 32 to 11 shots on goal. And a 48-17 attempt at those are reversed. Faceoff won 25-12 in favor of the Mavericks. You see the penalty minutes there. Out of town scores. Omaha up on North Dakota. 2-0 in the second period of play. Lake Superior up on Bemidji. No, that isn't right. Bemidji State is up 2-0 on Lake Superior State in the third. I know that to be true. Notre Dame leads the Gophers 1-0 in the third period up at Mariucci. Tech has upset Northern Michigan. That's a 6 and a 3 in the opening round here. St. Cloud and UMD are 1-1 in the third. And Denver and Colorado yet to come. Take a look at uh, the pairwise rankings down, and Mavericks, uh, as long as they continue to win, they'll get one of those top four spots, and that's all we're concerned about. I don't care if you're one, two, three, or four, as long as you're one of the number ones going in, that gives you the best chance. See, kind of jammed up there with four teams tied in the fourth spot between Boston College, UMD, and Denver, and of course, Bemidji State. You talked about that back in the first. We have the commission in the building right yep. behind us. And they would love to have two teams in a national tournament. There so 
Northern Michigan Tech takes on Northern Michigan in the first game of that series at Northern. They'll have the rematch tomorrow night. The Beavers up on Lake Superior State. Bowling Green in Alaska, and then Minnesota State and Alaska Anchorage. Mavericks get the lowest seed after this round, who's still surviving. So a uh, little bit of an upset, you would say, as far as yes. the seeds, but uh, I guess I can't say I'd be totally surprised if Tech is able to win that, just right. the intensity of the in-state rivalry. Well, and, and it's a six and a three. It's not a one and an eight. You know, it's a six and a three. That's a much more close battle during the regular season. Those are two teams that were only six points apart right. in the standings. Which so. is two victories over the entire course of the season. Exactly. So uh, Mavericks back to work here. They'll come out with the uh, 26 seconds left to go on a power play, but really at this point, five to one. And the Mavericks Seawolves, seem to be in control. Seawolves down four goals, had four shots on goal in the second period. That just tells you pretty much everything you need to know. Off the draw, won by Alaska Anchorage, and they send it down the ice. Mavericks. Rivera out in front. Here comes Dewar with the chance, and that one is save made. Again, goalie change after the first period. Chris Carlson started tonight. Now Brandon Aaron is in the nets. Seawolves back at full strength with that quick shot followed up there. French will oh. tee it up. <laughs> Probably had a better opportunity on the rebound than he did the original shot, but both are really good by Rivera. You heard the but clank that on that last shot there. He just missed it. Actually, I think it was Josh French who was coming down on the play. Charlie Girard. Smolik. Scheid will carry. Jeremko behind the net, trying to feed Gerard, but he was tied up on the play. Wyatt Amit. Jeremko puts one in on net that's kicked out. Long lead pass, St. Ange. Brown on the far side. He's got the lone goal tonight. Here's a chance for St. Ange. Back up on top. Pairs, and that one. Re initial save was made by Dryden McKay. A little bit of a rebound, but he quickly covered up on the play. Looked like it stunned him a little bit when it hit him. He caught him in the chest, and it looked like it uh, hurt him a little bit. And uh, Dallas Giraffe yeah. just uh, kind of scampered off. Not exactly sure what's uh, injured with him. but I uh, did not see it either. He, he went down the tunnel, and he's bent over. Looks like he's in a bit of pain right now. Yeah, there was a stick and a glove on the ice, so yeah. maybe he got... Uh, Boy, if he, if he got chopped shot. and hurt, that would be a shame. He's been playing incredibly well. Has a goal tonight, and again, 11 points in his last 11 games. With uh, five he of those being goals. He has not gone to the locker room yet. I can see him where he is. Souter dumped in. Michaelis is after it now with pairs. Souter along the boards. Tap down for Michaelis. Hukinson puts one into an open corner. Now behind the net for Michaelis. Hukinson looking for a tip. It's behind the net. Picked up by Pears. Souter and Trinkberger in the quarter. Souter pulls it out. Here's a chance out in front, bouncing away <laughs> from both Toomey and Michaelis. Brown with the screen and a nice glove save just tipped away. McKay was sliding to his right and the shot came to his left and he barely got a glove on it just enough to knock it wide. Amit will get to the red line but not far enough to avoid an icing call and the Mavericks will have to take the face off in their own defensive zone. We're back tomorrow night as we'll take maybe a look here at what it, yeah he took a shot from the clock and he Boy, just I saw the glove down so now we know yep. that's not good we have not seen him come back on the bench so far well, here, he comes. here he comes right now in fact they just taped him up yep. oh that had to sting yep. not fun Hey, he looks like he's got his wrist taped up, but looking for his glove, looking for a stick, and hopefully he'll be ready to go. Dubrovnik and Rivera after it. Marcus no, Mitchell. He, he might have a bag of ice on that. I think he does. I don't think he's coming back. Carroll. Smith. 
Trying to feed one for the prob. Nick Smith one more time couldn't take the pass that was between the skates. He's got a glove on and he's got a stick back, so that's good news. He's one tough dude. Yeah. Yeah, that absolutely hurt. Carroll. Rivera. Heikeverda. Able to clear. Hassan has taken away. Rivera dumps it down into the corner. Doer is after it. Doer down low for French. Unable to take that pass cleanly. Doer. And here is one Dallas Gerads. Smolik. Off the board trying to feed one for French. Poetic Justice says Dallas Gerads should get a goal here. Dumped out to center ice. McNeely turns it around. Renwick. Off a skate. Seawolves are going to have to wait to bring it into the zone. In fact, they'll play it all the way back into their own defensive zone. Nazareth. French will pick up the loose puck. Amit. Scheid. Played ahead for Trinkberger now on the Seawolves. Drayson Pears lifted into the zone. Amit for Minnesota State. Off the glass, ahead for Dallas Gerrads. Charlie Gerard now down low. No control as the Mavericks get some new skaters on the ice. Fry picks things up for the Seawolves. Played out for Lance. Lance trying to work around Carroll on the play. He'll just dump it in. Hookinson takes a hit on the back along the boards, and that's got another penalty coming up, and we'll see if they only go two more minutes on that. They're going to say that's that a boarding. boarding yeah. yep. Interesting to see here again. Shackle's going to go, and Mike Hastings uh, would Mike like Hastings to Mike Hastings wanted to call before and didn't yeah. get it. I don't know if he's now they're saying two minutes again. Get another look at it here. Oh, I don't know what you got to do. I don't. I don't know what you got to do to get five-minute major. That's the second one. That, that's the second one. If you want to get rid of it in college hockey, you got to call that. That was square in the back. Face first into the wall. It's five-one game. So yeah. It's time to kind of send the message that yep. we're not going to put up with that this yep. weekend. But. Shackle's only gone for two on a boarding. The Mavericks will go on their fourth consecutive power play. I'll bring it up in the post game. <laughs> and, and Mike Hastings uh, won't want to talk about it, and rightfully so. But there's a couple times now that I think we could have had a five-minute major. And if you want to get that stuff out of college hockey, the way to do it is to call the five-minute major. Carroll. French. Rivera. Poked away as it was attempted to be played out into the crease, and then Fry pokes it out. Wicks unable to gather up puck possession to create a shorthanded opportunity. Doer. Played now to Wicks. He carries to center ice. Still has it. Working against McNeely on the play. Doer. Mavericks will just kind of gather up possession, get some fresh power play guys on the ice. They bring out the top unit tonight with Smith, Toomey, and Michaelis. Smith behind the net for Toomey. Michaelis back to Toomey. Michaelis up on top, Shide with a goal. Toomey, far side, Michaelis tried to one-time one, and he partially fanned on the play. Michaelis, near side, now shy. Toomey, there's shy one more time. Michaelis couldn't take the pass cleanly. Toomey, he'll move to the slot down low for Michaelis. Out in front, tip attempt by Souter goes just wide. Shy. Down low for Souter, and then Ooh. it trickles just wide of the net. Out in front, score! Nice work, Souter to Toomey. 
Toomey with the finish. The Mavericks just kept on grinding and grinding down, and that was the difference. If you keep going to the well sooner or later, it's going to go in, and they did it there. Look at Souter from behind the net out front to Parker Toomey, and Toomey, Toomey with the finish. He's got his first goal of the night, and the Mavericks take a 6-1 lead. Nothing really for Ark to do with that no. one is uh, Souter from behind the net is able to find an angle, and Toomey was ready to take that pass one time it. And the Mavericks scored a couple of goals, both of the power play goals, to make it now seven. One, or six one rather, sorry. And we will take a break. Mavericks on top again. Mavericks on top, six to one. We're in the halfway point of the third period of play, and you uh, can see where the Mavericks coming into the weekend, where they finished up their regular season again, leading the country in the penalty kill percentage. Also, uh, goals against per game. And the Mavericks, uh, are even contest through the first 15 minutes, but then Mavericks with a couple of goals near the end of the first, and they've been in control since. A couple of power plays, they're two for four with the man advantage. We're talking with Mike Hastings uh, before the game about the ridiculous numbers that the Mavericks have put up defensively. And Lou Nanny was talking about it last night in the state high school hockey tournament that it's really difficult to put up those kind of numbers usually. But if you don't let the other team have the puck ever, like the Mavericks don't do, it gets a little bit easier. They play such great team defense, but they, they control the puck offensively so long, and they have it so often, and, and I mean, they just dominate the puck so much that it's a little bit easier to put up numbers like that. But those are absurd numbers that the Mavericks put up defensively, and they're scoring really, really well as well. I uh, had missed one of the assists on that last goal that went to Tortumi. Again, his 14th of the season. Souter had one. Well, Mr. Michaelis now has 160 career points with the three-point night. He had the other assist on that power play tally to make it 6-1. Mackey ahead now for Smith. He'll carry into the zone. Drop pass for Connor Mackey as it poked away. Ahead for Wicks, but he can't get the pass, and Carroll is there for the Mavericks. Carroll ahead for Smith. Ike Averta turns that around. Here's a chance now the other way. Brown with one goal tonight comes back and is stuffed. Man, right. that's a nice save. Nice McKay. And then Brown, as McKay had it covered up, took a uh -oh. Shot getting at it. They're going to send. They're going to send maybe Brown or Zmolik. Who's going to go? I think Zmolik's going to go for the little poke at the end there. And Zmolik's going to say, what about the guy, uh, the poke that the other guy took of my goaltender? I understand. Uh, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but it was the last one that they finally raised a hand and said, yeah, that one's, that one's the one that's going to Take a look at you. it afterwards here. And I don't think they were even going to send him there, but that was the one right there that they're, they're sending him for. So he covers up. Yep. Brown had his stick in there, and then so, Zmolik. And Zmolik gets the penalty for that one right there. Now their timeout is called by the Seawolves. Seawolves realizing that if they have any shot of getting back into this game down by five, uh, somehow they need to convert on... The power play will be just their second power play of the night. Looks like the officials were looking at something, but not taking an official look at anything at all. So two minutes up on the board. And we're back tomorrow night as you see where the Seawalls rank nationally, pretty much at the opposite end of the spectrum, given the fact there's 60 teams that play Division yep. One hockey. Uh, we're back tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. They're actually 6 o'clock to face off here, and then it's actually going to be an hour earlier if we get there on Sunday night, and then you got to throw daylight savings time into right. the whole thing. We know we're back tomorrow night. It's a 6 o'clock pregame yep. show. 6.07 is the face-off here, Central Time Zone Game 2 between the Seawolves and the Mavericks. Alaska Anchorage, you add up their power play and penalty kill. They're at an 8.93, and again, you want to be somewhere over the 
or, or 8.93. You want to be somewhere over the 117, somewhere around there, 118. Uh, so there, you can see there's room for improvement. You add the two of them together. Officially a roughing call on Zmolik. Brown trying to play it on top of the crease. He gets one more chance. And it's blocked by Rivera. Heikaverda gets there first. Played down. This could be, yep, an icing call against the Seawolves. Just a killer on a power play. You ice the puck on a power play. It's just, it's going to cost you 20 seconds on the clock after the faceoff. I mean, if you're lucky, it'll only cost you 15. But type of things that just can't happen when you're down by five goals against a really good team. Jeremko will step in for the draw along with Wicks. Fry gets there to take it away from Lutz. Now Brown. Wicks brought into the zone. Bouncing puck that no one has and finally Lutz gets there and sends it down the ice. Mike Deverda. Near side for Wicks. Far side, and that one is off post, or did he go off a piece of the equipment? I heard a clank. There. I don't know. I think that might have been a stick. Dryden McKay uh, had to go a long way to make that save if he did. Swept out of the slot area by Hookinson after the initial play. Now that one is cleared actually off a player in the Maverick bench, and so the faceoff's going to stay in the Maverick defensive zone. Still 50 seconds left to go in the power play. Nearly midway through the third period, shots on goal in favor of the Mavericks, 38-15. At one time, it was 7-7 seven seven shots on goal. Mavericks ended up leading after one period, 14-7. Out shooting 18-4 through the second period, uh, in the second period, so 38-15 now. Carroll, the Provnik, still behind the net. Now McNeely will pick up loose puck. They'll play it off the boards. Point being, Don, is after that good start by the Seawolves, 31 to 7 shots on goal in favor of the Mavericks since, since that point when they were 7 7, and it's a 1 1 hockey game. Nolan Nicholas will drive it into the zone. Carroll gets there ahead of Lance. To the far side, Nazareth. Nicholas back, Nazareth one more time. They play catch. Play down low. Carroll takes it away as they were trying to feed. Mavericks full strength. That looked like it was Zach Court on the play. Mavericks back at full strength. So the Seawolves 0 for 2 tonight. With the man advantage and the icing call will take the face off all the way back into the anchorage zone with now 942 left to go in the third talk with mike hastings after the game and uh, every monday morning at 9 10 on the morning blend on ktoe with myself and mike sullivan three guys who know a little bit about hockey well i think i like to say that i know the least out of the three of us but Doors tries to sweep it out into the crease, but it was blocked defensively. Doer yet still with the puck. Doer left off now for Rivera. Back for French. French fans on the first attempt, and then a the bouncing puck that Lance will just dump down the ice. Mavericks will go back, and it'll be another icing call. Well, yeah. good crowd tonight, Don. Hopefully we'll have an even bigger crowd tomorrow evening for that earlier start. And uh, the thing that you know about the Seawolves, tomorrow night it's do or die for them. Season comes to an end if they lose. So they absolutely will have to throw everything at the Mavericks that they have. And you know that uh, they're hoping for a better end of the first period. I mean, they played really well up until probably 15-minute mark of the first period. It's a 1-1 hockey game. But after that point, it just got away from them. Lifted out to center ice. Scheid will come back. Michaelis. Pairs. Head for DeGraff. Amit. Mackey. Souter. Off escape. Michaelis will track it down in the corner. Near side for Toomey. Connor Mackey. Hookinson down low. 
Souter had an opportunity for tip. There's Michaelis looking for an angle. Hunter Mackey. Oh, score! That was a laser. An absolute laser. He, he just slid a little bit to his left to open it up. And the goaltender, Brandon Perron, had no chance. He was on the left post trying to slide to the right side. When he got open, he was able to finish pretty easily. Connor Mackey with his seventh of the season, his 24th point. You'll see Connor Mackey had a lot of net to work with. Had time to settle the puck, bring it down, control it, and just snapped off a wrist yeah. there, and that was no chance whatsoever. Ron just could not get there in time to make the play, and now we're up to a 7-1 to score. Mackey, his seventh of the season at 11-28. I said this had seven written all over it, Don, and you knew it would get there sooner or later. Hukinson drives it into the zone. Who's puck? Fry trying to clear. He carried now by Heike Verda. Mavericks back to work one more time. Behind the net, Smith after the blast from the Provnik up on top. Zmolik, Carroll unable to control that play. Mackey with the goal. Souter and Michaelis on the assist. Both of those guys, Michaelis, four points tonight. Souter's got three. Actually, he's also got four all assists. Well, we've heard Mike Hastings say in big games so many times, you need your big knockers to come up and play big, and they certainly have done that tonight. Two guys that are going to receive strong consideration for postseason honors, potentially rookie of the year and player of the year in the WCHA. And with the four-point night again, as we continue to watch some of these scoring charts, Michaelis is now 161, just one point behind Thank Matt you. Leitner and a penalty coming up. They're going to call a hook, I believe. It was not much of a hook at all, but they're going to call it anyway. Mavericks played for Lutz, and then the Seawolves will just touch it. Oh, they're going to call a slash. And we'll come back with another Maverick power play, and they're in control, 7-1 to one on a Maverick cock. Action call against Nolan Nicholas. Um... A little, yeah. little tap in the rear end. I thought they were calling that as a hook, actually. I think it was just one of those deals where they say, let's not do that anymore. Everybody's falling from the sky. Yeah. Right. Oh, hey, don't hit the equipment now, everybody. Maintain control. That was my money that I let go. You let it go, and that yeah. was mine that I just let go. So it's the kind of people we are, Dan. Darn we just right. give and give and give. Zmolik, Mavericks two for four on the power play tonight. Gets past one, brings it down, and bouncing puck is Doer thought he had a chance on the rebound, but it's cleared down the ice. Hukinson, near side, Rivera. 120 left to go in the man advantage as Hukinson has to come back. This big lead in the final six minutes, you just don't want to get anybody hurt and you don't want to get sloppy. Finish up strong. Naprovnik into Charlie Girard, who was up somewhere in the uniform as he was able to kind of control things. Carroll. Amit, one timer down low, trying to feed Dallas Drads, and that's sent down the ice. Down to 45 in the man advantage. 540 left to go in the third. The Provnik ahead now carried in by Charlie Girard. The Provnik takes the hit, still controlled a little bit now. Dallas Girards and Masson. And then nice job there getting a stick on the play and sent down by Mitchell. Mavericks just too much for the Seawolves tonight, Don, but you know that tomorrow evening is a new game and season on the line for Alaska Anchorage. They're going to have to bring it uh, real seriously tomorrow night if they want any chance to get one more game out of them before their season comes to an end. Vera. French. 
Door. Back up on top for McNeely, and that pass failed to connect. Shots were 7-7 seven seven at one time. Now 43-15 in favor of the Mavericks. Carroll picks up the big rebound. Another shot. And Ron will hold on for that save. And Don Westfall and Dan McCarger back in downtown Mankato. Mavericks on top 7-1 to one, looking to close out game one of this best of three series. And then again, we'll be back tomorrow night. Mavericks with a number of guys hitting the scoring column a couple times tonight, led by Souter and Michaelis, each with four points as that shot in to the zone. And McKay makes another save. Mavericks out shooting the Seawolves right now, 45 to 16. And, and again, Dan, it was... It was 7-7 seven to seven at one seven time. It was 7-7, and it was a 1-1 one -one game yes. with about five minutes left, and everything was going the way that the Seawolves wanted to go, but this is how quickly things can turn. And Shots are 38-9 to nine since that time when there were 7-7. Seven -seven. Just think about that. Off the draw, controlled by the Seawolves. Nicholas will just dump it off the boards, looking for a carom. Hookinson, near side as the Mavericks unable to clear. Carroll pokes it away from Lance. Smith behind the net, lifted off all the way down the ice on net. Ron has to play it, and he'll play it ahead for Lance, who carries into the zone. Trying to look for a rink wide pass, but it's picked up by Naprovnik. Smith has it. Off for Dallas. Drags out in front. <laughs> Rebound is there, but it's swept aside. Great look for the Mavericks. That was a two on none. Score! Jack McNeely with the finish, his fourth of the season. That was almost too easy, but the one earlier is one where you don't see very often two on goal or anything like that. But Jack McNeely makes it eight to one Mavericks. There's just so many weapons. Mavericks, we had marveled just at a great opportunity, but then they come back in a nice cross ice pass. And there's really not a whole lot Brown could do no. with this one. It's just kind of one time by McNeely, as you mentioned, Dan, his fourth as the Mavericks. On top now, 8-1. Shrink Berger has it behind his own neck. In the corner, so Nons trying to force it out. Ahmet and McNeely on the assist at the goal, 16-29 for McNeely, his fourth of the year. I'm guessing that combination has never happened before. <laughs> He's probably correct. Doerr with the shot, and that one is off the back dasher. Near side, cleared out of the zone by Brown. Hookinson back. No whistles for the next 245. Let's uh, finish I'm this fine thing up. With that is Lutz will pick up the pass and dump it back into the zone. Stick with us as obviously after the contest is done, Dan will kick things off with the post game show and have a chance to talk to Coach Hastings. We'll see if we can get you an update of the scores around the WCHA and the first night of quarterfinal action as well. Nolan Nicholas, Sinclair. Played just wide of the net, but McKay will play it left off for Hookinson. As uh, everybody's listening to Dan's words, will we have an icing here? Yeah, unfortunately. Darn it. Too close, Dan. We're, we're, we're hoping. 2 one left to we go. We were hoping. It's a long time to play without a whistle. Well, we will see how much uh, Alaska Anchorage has in the tank because they played so well early on, and as the game has gone on, 
the depth and the talent of the Mavericks has just taken over, and yet they're going to have to come back. And, you know, Coach Hastings, one of the things that he's mentioned over the years is that uh, attempted shot by Bono never got off. Ending someone's season is the toughest thing to do because, as you mentioned, they're going to come out and throw everything they can at him. And human nature says the Mavericks will show up tomorrow thinking this is going to be easy after an 8-1 win tonight. Okay. Because they got two things going, and, and they could certainly have a turnaround tomorrow evening that makes us a much closer game than it is uh, tonight anyway. Face-off will stay in the Maverick defensive zone. But if it was 8-1 tomorrow night, it wouldn't surprise me at all because no. that, that's the difference between these two hockey teams. There is that big of a difference. Mavericks nearing 50 shots on goal here in the contest, just one short of that. Court will dump it behind the net, but Carroll picks things up for Minnesota State. Carroll back in his own zone as the Mavericks control. Dallas Gerads. Gerads behind the net, up on top for Carroll. Carroll gets one down low and puts one on net for the 50th shot, but it's into the glove of on and I guess maybe that's one of the biggest questions right. is not knowing if maybe Carlson was, was sick or something like that getting pulled after the first period of play who does Matt Curley come back with tomorrow night yeah it, I don't know that it matters that much one way or the other just uh, who, who does he feel had the best night who does he normally go to I mean the junior obviously Chris Carlson has played many more games you give the freshman a start in the playoff, so he's got one under his belt. Sinclair will tap it into the corner. Down to a minute left to go in the contest. Shackle along the boards will try to play it, but it's dumped into the corner by Rivera for Carroll. Carroll left off for Amit. Dewar left off. Here comes French, who gains the red line and dumps it in. Nicholas is back. Nolan Nicholas will flip it in just wide of the net. Smolik will come back to play it for the Mavericks. Sinclair unable to hold the line, so he'll dump it back in. Hookinson with 20 seconds left. Marcus Mitchell with the shot that's tipped wide by DeGraff. Lutz flips it out to center ice, and that's actually out of play. And we'll take a face off with 11 and a half seconds left to go. Out of town scores. Post game highlights and more coming up in just a few minutes on Maverick Hockey Weekend. Michaelis tonight with four points on a goal, three assists. Souter with four assists tonight to lead the way for the Mavericks. A tight contest early on that, they, again, they got a couple of late goals in the first after Lutz and Brown had opened up the scoring at one each. The horn blows, and the Mavericks with goals by Gerads and Michaelis to end the first. They uh, kind of rode out the remaining two periods of play and uh, controlled things throughout, and the Mavericks tonight open up the quarterfinal series here with Alaska Anchorage. It's the Mavericks 8 and the Seawolves 1. We'll take a break. And when we come back, Dan McCargo will have a chance to talk to Maverick head coach Mike Hastings. That and more coming up the post game here on a Maverick Hockey Weekend in Flow Hockey. TV. Final score this evening, 8-1. Minnesota State Mavericks over the Seawolves of Alaska Anchorage as you're hearing the players of the game be announced right now. And Mike Hastings, congratulations on a very sound opening win in the first game of the WCHA playoffs. Thanks, fellas. Uh, I thought, you know, they kind of came out for a, a street fight and put us back on our heels right away. I think 
if uh, Dryden wasn't as sharp as he was, we could have been down. So uh, it was nice to see us get a lead. And then they made their push, and uh, I liked the way we played over the second and third period. It was a 1-1 game with about five minutes to go. You got two goals late in the first period, and I thought that really seemed to turn the tide uh, for your club, and then you really got going in the second and third periods. Yeah, it's momentum. And, you know, like I said, they came out, and I, I thought they had the better of the play early. And I think shots were 5-5, and as it went on, it was a 1-1 game. And then I thought we did a real good job of – of not finishing on the period and, and getting our second one and then I, I think a real important goal was the last one uh, that we had in the first period where Mark finished. Pleasantly surprised the crowd uh, for this opening round with the kids out of school. A lot of times it hasn't been full. The building was really loud tonight and very full and I know it'll be even bigger tomorrow night and that makes a big difference to this team. Everything. You know, we, we play all season to have an opportunity in the playoffs to play at home and as you just referenced in the in the past we we haven't had the support that we had tonight so i want to say thank you from our entire group and look forward to hopefully seeing everybody back and a, a couple more tomorrow we've talked about this a number of times when you're trying to finish a team season off you're going to see everything that they've got we know that the sea wolves are going to be better tomorrow night yeah they will be i mean we're going to have to have a reset and again uh, like I said, I mean, you, you guys watched the first 10 minutes, and I, I thought they had the better of the play. So we're going to have to learn from that um, because they're going to have their backs against the walls trying to extend their season, and we're going to try and end it. So it's, it's going to be an important step for us tomorrow, and we look forward to the opportunity. Congratulations on a really nice victory tonight. Thanks a lot, guys. Final score this evening, Mavericks 8, Seawolves of Alaska Anchorage 1. We'll take a break and come back. We'll have highlights, out-of-town scores, stats, and more on Maverick Hockey Weekend. Don Westfall, Dad McCarger, working through the unique confines <laughs> of the Mayo Clinic Health System Event Center and the Mavericks tonight with an 8-1 to one win uh, in the end of the contest here. Dan, obviously a very impressive yes. performance for the Mavericks. You just heard uh, the discussion you had with Coach Hastings. Seawolves came out and played the kind of game they were looking for for the first 15 minutes, but a couple late goals in the first, and then the Mavericks just controlled play throughout the rest of the contest. Yeah, I tell you what, we, we were saying midway through the first period, this does not look like a one versus eight but we assumed it was going to get there it got there but it took a while they the sea wolves were very good and as we mentioned just a minute ago with mike hastings tomorrow night they're going to throw everything they've got because they 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 have no choice the season ends for them if they lose tomorrow night so you're going to see them at their very best tomorrow night mavericks with three goals in the third we're going to bring you those highlights here as we've taken a look at the other goals during the intermissions so parker toomey from lucas Souter at 647 Gives the Mavericks uh, their sixth goal of this evening. And Connor Mackey, his seventh of the season from Mark Michaelis and Lucas Souter at 11-28, makes it 7-1. And Jack McNeely will finish off the scoring, his fourth of the season from Julian Napravic and uh, Wyatt Amat at 16-29. That made it 8-1, and that's the final score. Shots on goal there, you see 50-17, attempted 70-27. You see the block shots. Mavericks 2-5 for five on the power play, 0 for 4 the Seawolves. And the Mavericks win the faceoff battle 38-20. Out-of-town scores, Omaha 4-1 over North Dakota in the third period of play. Bemidji State uh, is up 2-0 in the third. The Gophers lose to Notre Dame 1-0 tonight. Michigan Tech with an upset over Northern Michigan. That's a 6-3 in the WCHA playoffs. UMD beats St. Cloud tonight 4-1. And Denver and Colorado College are coming up. And, of course, one more game you haven't seen listed there, but the uh, fourth of the quarterfinal matchups. Uh, about set to start, not right. too far from now, up in Alaska. And we'll, of course, bring you that uh, final score tomorrow night when we're back here. And, again, Dan, Mavericks 8-1 winners tonight. Uh, really no reason at all that they should not close this out. They're, they're the Correct. better team. Yes. Uh, Alaska will come out and give them everything they have. But if the Mavericks play their contest with that solid defense, you have McKay back in the nets who really wasn't tested too much tonight. Mavericks should be able to close this thing out. You would certainly assume so show up and play the way you have all season long and you're moving on to the next round that's all you want to do we'll see if the mavericks can pull through on that again we're back tomorrow night six o'clock the pregame show 607 from downtown mankato on the central time zone for everyone up in alaska watching we're glad you're with us however here tonight and again the mavericks control this one a couple late goals in the first and they end up with an 8-1 win tonight defeating alaska anchorage for dan mccarger myself don westfall and all the students from bethany lutheran college we thank you for watching and we'll see you tomorrow night for game two in this best of three quarterfinal series.